percent of the pharmacies providing HIV self-testing as of 2018. We did a cross-sectional survey from November last year to February this year in 195 pharmacies. And we selected these pharmacies through stratified random sampling where we had two lists, one list of those already providing the HIV self-testing, and then another list for those registered by the Pharmacy and Poisons Board but not providing the kits. Then we selected randomly now for both lists. And the measures we are looking at were operational capacity in terms of the premises, the systems available and staff. We're also looking at the dissemination and adoption of the policies and the provider motivations and challenges. Next. So for our findings, I will present the breakdown by counties, but I will mainly concentrate on the total. The ones in bold indicate those that had a big difference and the ones with the asterisks indicate those that were statistically significant. So for when it comes to operational capacity in terms of the premises and staff, 13% of the pharmacies in the survey were part of a chain or a brand network with the lowest number being in Kisumu with only 8%. 38% of those visited had a consultation room, with this number being lowest in Mombasa, with only 23%. 9% had an on-site laboratory, with this number being very low in Mombasa, with only 1%. Next slide, please. So for the service providers, the average number of service providers across the three counties was two, two service providers and 20% of the pharmacies had at least one degree holder, and 97% had at least one diploma holder. Next, please. So when it comes to policy dissemination and adoption, all the pharmacies in the survey had heard about HIV self-testing. 94% had received a client asking for HIV self-testing. 79% say to have a staff member trained on HIV self-testing with this number being significantly low in Kisumu, 58%. So when it comes to adoption, adoption was our primary outcome. And by adoption here, we mean those that were implementing or offering either HIV self-testing and PrEP. And the adoption across the three counties was 55%. And this was highest in Mombasa with 66%. The time since adoption, uh, which is the time between when they started providing the kits and now when we did the study, was 14 months across the counties. And this was lower in Kisumu, which was nine months. For PrEP, PrEP is not here in the slide because it was very small. 95% had heard about PrEP. 66% had received a client asking for PrEP, but only 3% of the pharmacies were providing, had ever provided PrEP. Next slide, please. So when it comes to the service level, 94% had had HIV self-testing in stock. And this was highest in Mombasa with 100, 100%. 67% had sold the kits in the last week, with the number being lower in Kisumu with only 52%. The average number of kits sold in the last week in the pharmacies was three. And this was highest in Mombasa, I mean Nairobi with four but none of the pharmacies had tested, uh, uh, had clients test within the pharmacy in the last week. Next slide, please. When it comes to reporting and monitoring, 17% of the pharmacies prepared regular reports on HIV self-testing and none in Kisumu, 0%. And 51% had been visited by the self-testing program coordinators in the last six months with the highest being in Mombasa with 83%. The average number of times visited, of the pharmacies visited by the program coordinators in the last six months was six, with this being highest in Mombasa with six. Next slide, please. So when it comes to the motivation, provider motivation and challenges for the self-testing, the main motivation were mainly altruistic where 32% of the providers reported the main motivation to be to promote the well-being of the clients. They also reported to be to prevent HIV and reduce stigma around HIV. Other motivations were such as it's part of their job and to make money. Next, please. 
So for the challenges, the main challenge reported was the price, the high price of the kits. Other challenges uh, were, were such as inadequate counseling skills, time constraints since they said it takes a bit longer to serve a client asking for the HIV self-testing compared to just other, other services. Another challenge was client refuse counseling. And also a high number also reported having no challenges, as you can see in the blue bar. Next, please. So for PrEP, the main, no, no, just back, back, please. Previous slide. Yeah, for PrEP, the main challenge reported was that there are no proper programs to provide training required by the service providers and also to acquire the medication itself. That was a main challenge. Okay, next. So from this, we concluded that there are adequate structures and resources available in the pharmacies for the delivery of the policies, such as the uh, trained staff, the consultation rooms, the laboratory as seen in the results. Uh, but there's higher adoption of HIV self-testing than PrEP. There's also better program support for HIV self-testing in Mombasa and Nairobi. From this, we recommend that the pharmacy service providers be trained on the PrEP policies and proper programs to acquire the PrEP to be established. Next. So I would like to thank, and I mean, I'd like to acknowledge and thank my mentor and supervisor at the Camry Welcome Trust Research Program, that is Dr. Peter Mugo and Dr. Edwin Baraza. I'd also like to thank Dr. Daniela Munene for her support during the data collection. I'd also like to thank Clarice for, uh, who was part of the field team and our funders, the Welcome Trust. And finally, I'd like to thank the Initiative to Develop African Research Leaders, which is ideal for giving me an opportunity to uh, start my career in research. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Audrey Mumbi, for that very informative presentation around um, PrEP and um, HIV self-testing services. We really appreciate the good work you're doing and um, yeah, we encourage such presentations. I'd like to just uh, give a reminder to our presenters to kindly go to the Q&A tab so that they, could be able, they can be able to answer any questions that have been addressed to them from the participants. Next, we'll have another abstract presentation from Dr. Mary Sang. And Dr. Mary Sang will be taking us through Building financial capacity of primary health care facilities in Baringo County. Welcome, Dr. Sam. Okay, thank you. So, my name is Mary Tang. Can you hear? Um, I'm the MND officer in Baringo County. I'll be taking you through. Um, how we are trying to build financial capacity of primary health care facilities in the county. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so um, in Kenya, the, there's been an increase in the demand for health services. Uh, but uh, there hasn't really been an increase in funding to cater for these needs. In fact, uh, if anything, it's like the fund has reduced, especially in our county. So when you look at the, the budget for 2018-2019 financial year, 46% uh, of, of the entire county budget came to health services. So this might look like there was a lot of money for health, but actually three quarters of this uh, payment of salaries. So that means we only had a quarter that was left for operations and development, primary healthcare facilities that don't collect any revenue. So the, the, uh, there was a great need in terms of funding. So this means um, there was a significant gap in financing. So 
Next, please. Next. Next, please. Yeah. Sorry, Dr. Sang, you seem to be breaking a bit. Okay. Um, can you hear now? Yes, we can hear you. Really sorry about that. No worries. So, increase reimbursements. from NHIF Linda because this is where the Sorry, facilities Sam. could be able to get additional funds. We seem to be losing you a bit again. So if if um these claims were followed up by the primary health care facilities it was going to improve um in yeah uh, let me just hello yes dr sang we can hear you You can proceed. Dr. Sang. Hello. Hello, Dr. Sang. I'm sorry. I can hear I can hear you. Yes. You can proceed. Okay. So we want sorry about that so we wanted to improve financial capacity of health facilities because this would help them to improve their service delivery next slide please uh, next slide so what we did we have um six abu select three facilities from the entire county so the first thing we did was to cluster the six sub county marigat baringo central cluster north tiati cluster we selected a health center called barresa and then in kwebatek mogotio cluster we selected emining because we just wanted to pick three out of um, all the facilities as a pilot so what we did after th these were just selected with in the on the basis of those that were likely to to take up the the idea much is more easily so we sensitized health workers in this facility decided to do a benchmarking visit to a facility in Aquel in terms of claims and they so we took representatives from these three facilities to visit Kedan and what that facility was doing with the money so they they really saw a, a positive utilization of the funds they saw that it was possible and then uh, we decided now to monitor these facilities for one year next So after one year, because we, that visit was in December 2018, so like for the year of 2019 is when they were implementing. So if you look at um, the results, the um, Emining and Barresa in the year of 2018 had, had not made any claims, so they never received any money. But Loboy in Baringo South had received 11,350 the entire year. So after now the benchmarking, and now they were able to do their claims better, document so that they were able to get money. 
they decided to, I mean, they, they got, uh, like Eminem got 590,450, while Barossa got 249,050. Uh, I didn't do 2020 because we've not finished the year, but as of now, it's, uh, there's been a really uh, much greater improvement. In fact, Barresa is like over 700 if you look at it around this time. Next. Uh, next. So um, how these funds were utilized? So in Barresa, they were able to to actually hire an additional nurse with the money that they're receiving from the reimbursements. They were able to, packs have um, a pack that her mother is given when she delivers at that facility, which um, has increased even the number of women who come to deliver there. For Eminem, they've been able to refurbish their maternity unit. They've put curtains to divide They've, um, they, they did their floor, they're paying a stipend to their casual workers, and they've even installed grills for a copying machine and a laptop. Which they are using to help to, to do the claims. Next. Next. So um, what are some of the lessons we learned? We saw that uh, arranging learning or, or promising practices is likely to who, when visit, they are encouraged by the fact that if others can do it, they can also do it. Then we also saw that reimbursements from Linda Mama have the potential to improve service delivery. And also there's room to use resources with, which are within our reach to really make a difference. So um, this is an example of uh, the Mama Pack, um, which, were, which are purchased with reimbursements from Linda Mama. It includes a basin, a baby shawl, baby things soap, diapers, and sanitary tabaresa. So people are likely to come here rather than other facilities. So um, I'd like to acknowledge um, Barinko County Health, the management and leadership team, also sub-county health service code from the three sub-counties, Marigat, Baringo North, and Mogotio. And then the in charges of the maternal, neonatal, and child health units in those three facilities. Um, there's a nurse called Kisale at Emining, a nurse called Kosge at Loboy, and then Chebet, who used to be at Baruesa, but uh, was transferred out, so Rugut is currently there. And also the UN that helped us to identify um, the facility in Nakuru, and they also helped us to get permission from Nakuru County to visit their facility. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mary Sang, for your wonderful presentation. You have really, really brought out the importance of why why it's important to improve financial capacity in our healthcare facilities because this directly um, translates to improvement of healthcare services and healthcare delivery to our clients so thank you once again for the work you're doing on the ground and for your very informative presentation um, thank you presenters for um, being patient with us I'd like to now uh, introduce our next uh, presenter for the day. Um, it will be a presentation on healthcare as an investment, and it will be by Dr. Louis Mashogu. We all know Dr. Louis Mashogu. He's the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya. Dr. Louis works with amazing individuals and teams in transforming Africa's healthcare 
into a functional and sustainable ecosystem for all through medkit.network limited. Dr. Somoni's work has previously been recognized with notable awards such as Jacob's Well Awards, that was in 2018. Um, also the Men Impacting Differently Award, top 40 under 40 business leaders, and that was in 2016. We also have the top 100 East African business finalist, BD Africa, ILO Launchpad in 2011. How remarkable. He is devoted to and enjoys learning more about healthcare enterprises, both startups and SMEs seeking change and growth. Individuals seeking balance around their marriage, raising children, hobbies, as well as men challenging themselves into leaders who leave a worthwhile legacy in their areas of service or influence. Um, Dr. Machogu, I'd like to hand over this session to you. Welcome, Dr. Ari. Hi, uh, thank you, Dr. Chisakazi. Um, morning, everyone. I was even wondering who we are talking about. <laughs> uh, uh, will, uh, will I be able to share my screen? Morning, everyone. Morning, Dr. Mashogu. I, I, um, I, I first, I'd like to thank um, the attendance. It's been quite high uh, throughout the, um, all the programs. Uh, I'd like to thank the team, the secretariat team. I know they're locked up in the office trying to make this all work. Um, uh, and also the committee for the committee for the symposium committee, um, yeah, and also all NEC members, NGC members, also the leaders. I saw yesterday uh, we had leaders from CAPI, we also leaders uh, from um, KPDA, um, FKPM as well. Um, it's quite amazing to see the family all coming together. And yeah, so I'd like to make a presentation today on uh, on raising our profile as, as Kenyan pharmacists. And uh, uh, am I still able to share? I can't share. Is someone working on that? Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Um, I'm trying to see. Um, did, did you guys see my message this morning? I'm, I'm sharing my screen. I don't know how many of you saw my message this morning. Um, um, I think I was calling out to, so we've made a presentation before at the AGM and we've had several meetings. Uh, so I would like to present on the final recommendation for the, to the PSOC board for the investment in a high, high volume parental fluid manufacturing plant. This is something we've been uh, doing due diligence over the last, uh, nearly two years. Um, uh, it's, it's gained traction maybe towards end of mid this year when we got a, 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 a shot in the arm from one of our colleagues, and I'll be sharing that shortly. Uh, but really what you're trying to do is, um, I think we've been having conversations and uh, wondering how do we raise the profile of the Kenyan pharmacist, uh, the profession itself, and PSK regionally and globally. Um, those of you who know in the past uh, there are many other areas we try to do that uh, i usually say there are three options and i think generally i agree because even yesterday someone in the break one of the breakout sessions mentioned that we actually need um, we need we need uh, to be in parliament uh, i don't know if any of you know that we've actually have pharmacists to be in parliamentarians um, we have uh, dr chris murungaru who was quite crucial together with the uh, honorable fellow on demo to get us the doctor title. Uh, I think he used to be a CS at that, uh, uh, he was a CS at that time, or um, he was quite high up there uh, as, a, as a parliamentarian. Um, we also, later on he became the CS uh, of internal security until now he left. Then we also had uh, Dr. Mtanalewa, who, who was a MP in Kilifi County. Uh, we also had a honorable fellow, Mtanalewa. Uh, let me correct myself there. Um, also, we've had uh, the former president, Dr. Paul Moniki. He ran uh, in, in um, 
was it Kibwezi, one of the Kibwezis, yeah? he, he ran, of course, uh, he didn't get. Uh, I don't know if any of you know all that, but I, I keep hearing we need to enter politics because that's where we need to do. But again, politics, it can finish our money and just leave us even more, you know, uh, uh, with a shorter hand than we actually had. When we made noise, uh, you know, we've been making noise over the over the years, um, right from when we got arrested. I, I know you you know that uh, we got arrested. We even hid our president uh, in a safe house uh, and reassured the family that he was well until the that that cloud came down, uh, the dust came down. But also um, recently, when we've um, challenged Parliament. Even myself and uh, my neck members getting threatening messages, yeah, of um, of uh, of what we are pushing for, yeah. And really, we are not pushing for our own selves, yeah. Um, we are pushing for the betterment of the public. We want the public to have access to the right and safe products uh, of of guaranteed um, quality, uh, strengthened regulator. Um, strengthened profession, uh, raised prof uh, profile of the profession. But again, we also, when you make noise, you also get labeled as you just want to amass something for yourself. So we are left with the third option, which uh, I like it because this option is not left to the PSK leaders alone. Yeah, it's not left to your branch leaders, to your sector leaders. It actually comes down to each and every one of us, as His Excellency the President usually says, Mimi Nawewe. It requires our competence, and it's uh, the project of creating a flagship project, uh, project of national interest. Uh, most of you know, since COVID, uh, the government has been fast tracking um, uh, national, you know, uh, projects that, are, especially in healthcare, projects that have uh, national investors and uh, what have you, so that we don't have to uh, import some of the things that are crucial for us to live. And one of them is the infusion. Um, we know that Autosterol and uh, Infusion Kenya used to be the main ones. They are no longer. Their products, are, uh, their equipment are obsolete. They are out of market. Uh, they they can't meet the um, the demand that is there, as I'll be showing uh, later. Uh, so I can see we are 300 and something. Um, that's good. I, I when I sent this message, I wanted to sort of um, just uh, get you thinking and come in and uh, see how then can you, uh, we make you aware how you and your loved ones can take part through private, private placement in investing in a center of excellence and a profitable high volume parental fluids plant uh, that has regional and global impact. Um, it, we also target to be the first to IPO um, in the healthcare segment. All of you know that there's no healthcare segment in, let alone pharmaceutical, there's no healthcare segment in the national uh, Nairobi Stock Exchange. So this opportunity we are providing you is one of serving the nation, raising your profile as a Kenyan pharmacist and PSK, and giving you a huge return on investment for your generosity and vision. Um, already we've gotten, uh, um, we've gotten 14 percent of the phase one funds, as I'll show, um, and we have a feasibility uh, data that we've done, uh, captured over over that period of say two years, and we've come up with a roadmap that now is in the recommendation report that we submitted on 6th of October, on Tuesday. Um, and we have uh, approached some strategic partnerships. Uh, those of you who came to the AGM, you know, we made the presentation of what you had presented to Africa Import and Export Bank, who said they, I mean, this is the kind of thing that they're looking for. Uh, we just need to make certain things in order, and that's what we've done in the roadmap. Uh, yeah, so, so, as much as uh, I know it's a good idea and you would like to uh, congratulate yourselves for the masters we've made so far, I would like you to ask us the hard questions because that's where we will be able to, to be able to uh, sort of, because um, we want to plug those holes, yeah, so that we can be able to have something that will be successful. So don't, don't um, um, feel uh, like you can't hard, ask a hard question, please ask it because that's how we'll be able to make it a success. So into my presentation. Uh, here we go. So this is the, I think it's visible. If, you, if, you, if it's not visible, you can put it on chat and say that it's not, and I'll try and see what I need to do. Um, but you can view this on your screen and I'll be able to share this. And remember, the, we are recording this. So 
we're calling it Operation Raising the Profile of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, because that's the home. That's really the home uh, of uh, pharmacists and the friends of pharmacists. Um, we were, it's about serving the nation, raising our profile and giving us a huge return, you particularly, uh, on your investment for your generosity and vision. So it's an invitation to invest in a local fluids manufacturing plant. Um, we had a member who, who responded to, and I think I said this in, our, in, our, in my opening remarks, um, who has seen the last three years, the last four years, the work we've put in, the selfless sacrifice that has been provided by the leaders uh, from National Governing Council, NEC, uh, and they're looking about matters ex existential, you know, where, what will we leave for the next generation? Yeah, will PSK always be going with a begging cup, you know, uh, year in, year out? Will all the funds coming from membership just go towards running operations? And remember one of the visions when we were coming in is, uh, can we make, can we look for alternative funding that will be able to make sure that we give um, uh, the membership funds go direct to uh, branch membership activities instead of going to the head office, then something is sent back, yeah. Uh, Again, we hope that the, uh, the national government, uh, the county governments will learn something from us. So, so you can see we don't necessarily have to go to parliament to be able to uh, influence and uh, the nation. I mean, Safaricom didn't go to parliament. So we can actually go into the market. Equity didn't go to the parliament. We can actually go to the market. And as we go to the market, then the public will be able to see there are people called pharmacists and why shouldn't they be our members of parliament, why shouldn't they be our senators, why shouldn't they be our um, um, MCAs and what have you. Um, so, so Dr. Tundo got uh, inspired by our vision uh, and our sacrifice. Uh, remember, um, apart from the secretariat, that's the CEO and um, the team she has there, which we actually don't pay market rates. None of us is paid to do this work. We all serve and because we have a vision that is, has brought all of us together. And we would like to sell the same vision to you so that you rally behind it. Yeah, we, I think we've shown commitment over the last years. Uh, and uh, you, you can actually reward yourselves by just plugging in and, and calling the other members in. Because right now we only have 343. And a, a huge number of them is our friends, uh, friends of the profession. So um, yeah, uh, where, where, where is everyone and can they come back? So we want you to, by word of mouth, if each of you can go reach out to five other pharmacists out there, um, we can pull, pull this off. Um, so we have generously been offered five acres of commercial land. Um, from this, we, as we pull this off, we don't even have to worry about where will PSK be officed, yeah? The, um, if this is in Machakos County, so that means the Eastern branch and the national office will have a home, yeah, uh, to build our first parental fluids plants uh, and R&D in niche products. Um, we know the opportunities at Harbor Pharmaceuticals, but that's another phase. Uh, right now we're looking at volume, uh, high volume uh, parental fluids. Um, we also have key data on feasibility. Dr. Tundo, just to show, remind you, has uh, over 30 years experience in the sector, has been a mentor to each and almost a lot of, uh, many of us, uh, has served many of us, and also has been in the manu local manufacturing sector for over the last 24 years with Sphinx. Um, those of you who know, KMA, I mean, um, if I would ask you which are the, uh, in, court to court, uh, in quotes, the titans of uh, professional bodies, you'd say KMA, LSK, Icepark. If you go dig deeper, um, what made them, um, you know, uh, have that confidence? And, uh, you know, uh, apart from, of course, uh, um, understanding the identity and all that, but one of the things is having the um, land donated to them. KMA got their land and donated to them in, uh, in uh, Upper Hill. LSK, uh, where they host their office, Ice Park as well. Uh, so it's it's uh, this this gesture of donating land to this project is actually a huge uh, one, and I think it will propel us into a new into a new um, uh, area in in terms of level in terms of raising our profile. So we expect the impact to be as follows: to boost local uh, supply chain and commodity securities for the health sector, achieve self-sufficiency aspirations, model technical knowledge transfer, skills utilization, research and development that will act 
as a stepping stone for future expansion into increase and decentralized production at county and Africa regional level as, as well as export. So the five acres will go in towards this project. PSK will get a corner to have its, set up its office and resource center. Um, I'm trying to see. Uh, yeah, so please keep the questions coming. Uh, some of the questions are being asked, I can see will be answered in this presentation. Um, and of course the cream of all this is, uh, we'll be able as PSK to showcase the leadership domicile within its members. Leadership that identifies meets societal needs through commerce, enterprise, and professionalism, while offering an investment opportunity first to pharmacists, then to the rest of the country and world. Uh, when we invest, when we list in the NSC uh, as a, as the Safaricom IPO for the health sector and pharmaceutical industry trading group of the NSC. Um, this is just an image to show what donations can do to the profile of your of your organization. Um, uh, and particularly the donation of land. Yeah. So we have IcePark, we have KMA, we have LSK, um, PSK. So for us is, um, you know who PSK is. This, uh, yeah, I was just sharing who the other bodies are. Uh, you all know who they are. PSK is our representative body of uh, pharmacists and uh, showing leadership in this sector. Um, so this is an opportunity for us, like I said, to just do uh, showcase our leadership. Our differentiator, and why I think we will make this is, uh, if you look at these others, um, KMA built this project and sold it. I doubt they would be able to list this project in the stock market because uh, they are not really experts in uh, real estate, yeah? Uh, and as we are experts in our pharmaceutical supply chain and commodity security. So this is our sector. And our hypothesis came about when um, we sat down and thought, if you remember PSK did the Kiambu project, eh? if we are not experts in lands and the public gave us, I think uh, for that project um, uh, was almost 0 0.75 billion yeah, uh, for that Kiambu project. What of now where we are investing in a project where we are experts in? Just look at that image, yeah? A plant where we are experts in. And I can tell you in that land in Kiambu, no one has constructed apart from Dr. Dubai Ngera. There are 150 plots. No one apart from Dr. Dubai Ngera who has started construction. Those of you who bought in that uh, Durich project and also those of you who did, uh, um, uh, who are in PISOC, who are investors in PISOC. So you know that, yeah? Um, so they actually, packed their money for seven years, speculating. But here we are saying, you come and pack your money in a project where we are experts in and can drive, and we know where we are driving to as we are going into the counties and also regionally. So we have a final report here that we made to the, um, to the PSOC board that came from uh, uh, over 10 meetings. We had a, a meeting at the PSK GM. We've met NEC. We've met the piece of board. We've had, I think, six special committee meetings uh, yeah. on the food plant. We met uh, Afrexim Bank. We've met market consultants uh, and manufacturing consultants. Um, so the first, the first item is um, forming a project steering committee. So with with the following um, uh, terms of reference: setting up, setting and fundraising, setting up a fundraising, setting up and fundraising a budget. For the, pro, uh, for the project, fundraising uh, on the investment, uh, stakeholders engagement and management, uh, project management, delivering the project, set the project up for structures of profitability, success and listing in the NSC within the next seven years. Um, those of you who know, uh, uh, task is wanted to list, was already being accelerated in a program for listing in the NSC. So the NSC is actually hungry for products, projects that make sense, yeah? Uh, we've also approached them, and uh, those of you who know, I, I was in the class for the Business Daily to 40 Under 40 with the CEO for NSC, and uh, they're actually waiting for this project to come in. They can accelerate us, uh, especially because it's a project of national interest. Run with the recommendations in this report. So point number two, composition of the project steering committee. Uh, there's a chair uh, there, uh, the PSK president, uh, three PSOC members. Again, this will be strategically picked from tasks that uh, will be listed below. There are nine tasks. Um, 
it would be good to have uh, leaders like uh, um, the MEDS CEO, Dr. Masiga, you know, guys who've been able to, um, and others who are out there, again, we, the PSOC board will be able to reach out and uh, bring them strategically for this project. We have uh, Dr. Tundo as a member or his alternate, uh, Dr. Daniela, um, uh, and at bare minimum, someone who is at her caliber, yeah? Uh, in terms of project management, communication, she's a communications expert and uh, all that. We have the piece of financial consultant. Uh, we will we'll need a project and financial consultant who has experience in preparing a company to list in the Nairobi Stock Exchange. That will be one of the team members there. Uh, communications and marketing consultant with experience in fundraising for such a target group, uh, from such a target group and product. Again, uh, we'll get expertise. Uh, you remember when Safaricom wanted to do IPO, they got um, um, I forget that communications company, but they got a communications company that really talks to each. So we have diverse membership. How can uh, the member who is um, just starting out give a thousand into the project? How can the member who is uh, self actualized uh, donate 50 million into the project? Yeah, uh, not, pro not donate, invest. Yeah, also uh, specifically, we have identified the following three industry experts uh, Dr. Franklin Keter, PhD. Uh, I think you saw his uh, credentials yesterday when Dr. Wanyanga was presenting, Dr. Onkoba. Uh, there's some work they did with Kemri. And um, uh, again, uh, he's also a leader who has served us in the leader, uh, Legal and Ethics Committee, uh, Dr. Wanyanga uh, as well. Uh, these would be our experts that we'd, uh, we'd approach to form this uh, project steering committee. Uh, number three, we've uh, reached out to B. Brown. B. Brown is the only local manufacturing infusion plant in the country. Um, and also B Brown only is in the EPZ. So it, it, it manufactures for exports. Only 20% comes to the local market. So we'd like them as a, just to do market due diligence in the, in the sector and also interest them as a strategic investor in this project. Yeah, because they can give us, uh, of course, cash and technology transfer. We don't want to go groping in the dark. Yeah, we are open to have experts coming in and invest and sort of catapult us. We, we, we don't want groping in the dark, like I said. Um, we'll visit, the, Dr. Otunda has offered three different areas in Mombasa Road uh, for commercial land. Again, uh, the team has to look at the suitability for pharmaceutical plant manufacturing. Uh, so the criteria there, access, uh, landscape, uh, you know, um, uh, power supply, water supply, environmental impact, all that. Uh, to ascertain compliance to the EIA uh, criteria, which is crucial for fun, uh, future fundraising. So initially we are fundraising, uh, I'll show you how we're doing that, uh, but um, we need to be in compliance with EIA criteria uh, as that's what actually Africa Import and Export Bank uh, um, required of us. Give it a value by a valuer uh, for the shares in revenue suppliers. Uh, so that's the a special purpose vehicle we have. Uh, PSK will get a small portion allocated to it for the purpose of its official office space. And uh, I guess, again, also it's uh, shareholding. Quantification and phasing of the project, uh, point number, number five, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one is fundraising and setting up the plant. This will take uh, up to two years. Uh, so that's, you're looking at 2020, so 2021 and end of 2022. Um, a plant size of 20,000 square feet, yeah, um, producing a total of 12 million units. Uh, the local demand is 40 million units. Uh, that's, uh, and if we choose to do export and um, local consumption, which will apply for local uh, will, uh, special, pub, special economic zones where we can be able to export uh, a larger fraction, uh, sorry, in, uh, put into the local market a larger fraction than what an EPZ puts into the local market. Um, can we put the questions coming? I can see they are coming, but I can see they're coming at the chat, not in the Q&A, but yeah, please, we'll, we'll skim through those. Um, so 6 million, so half of the 12 million is 15% of the 40% local consumption. Uh, and you, even with what uh, B. Brown are doing, it's not, they're, doing, they're not doing enough. So the rest we, we import. Uh, remember the other plants are um, uh, either they're, they're, they're actually, one is closed, the other one is, uh, has been trying to sell. 
but it's not feasible to buy it because you're better off just doing a project from Greensfield. So that's one of the due diligences we did. Um, phase two is uh, raising 1.5 million US dollars for management and incidentals. Again, that's for the two years uh, to four years. Um, phase three is 10 million uh, US dollars that will go into giving us a 24 million uh, units uh, and upwards of 24 million production. So we'll have regional plants of which uh, export and uh, local consumption. Um, you'd, you'd want to have a plant in, um, in, uh, towards the border in Busia so that we can serve the export market of, uh, out in Uganda. And also, because remember these are fluids, they're heavy to carry. Yeah? So it reduces your uh, distribution costs. Um, again, that's three to six years uh, for phase three. Um, so we'll, how we raise the funds is private placement, first to PSK members and their incentives that we provide. But again, it will be a timed, it will be a timed uh, fundraising because time is not on our side. And remember, we're making this information public. The next thing you'll see is uh, someone has taken it and they are trying to do um, you know, a half-baked project of what you are envisioned. So for us, is time is of the essence. We have the due diligence done and all that. So uh, it will be calling on members to, to on board. Uh, if again, members don't on board, uh, we'll do, uh, fa uh, you know, phased opening to other groups. Uh, so that's to our friends uh, out there. Uh, we can bring in KMA Circle and finance the members it has. We can talk to um, uh, specialized groups. Again, it, 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 we will not fundraise from the general public because we are limited by the capital market authority. So we'll target specific groups, KPA, we'll target um, uh, KMA, we'll target uh, even LSK, just specific groups where they, are, they understand and know the risk of what you're doing. Um, we'll also do strategic investors to cover up phase three. Uh, again, if they come in earlier, well and good. If we convince uh, B. Brown to come in early uh, for the technology transfer and what have you, we'll be happy to do that. The total project cost is 16.5 million uh, US dollars. Again, those, that's the cost per face. Um, we want to, one of the KPIs is uh, the roads to NSC that will give this team. Um, and it's not anything new. Yeah, if you look at the equity bank, um, uh, they they had a similar journey. It had its own members as a building society who bought the initial share, shares. We have our own members who buy shares. Uh, we'll invite, uh, sorry, through private placement. Um, we'll, we'll increase the net. Uh, we know of uh, uh, those members who brought in other members to buy the initial investment uh, in uh, equity. Again, we'll do that for PSK. Uh, we um, deliver and oper operationalize global banking. We'll do that for the more modern plants will attract a strategic partner. You remember equity attracted Helios partners as a strategic investor that had 25%. Uh, again, that was a, a regulatory requirement that, that they couldn't do more than 25% uh, of equity. Uh, we, they had that, we'll invite one. Uh, again, uh, uh, an investor who has strategic interest in, and will benefit from listing in the NSC. Uh, so that all journey, you know, you see uh, one of the incentives that will give the initial people once we reach our target of in the phase one funds is uh, the bonus share awards. Again, all these, uh, the, cons the finance consultants in the team will be able to work it out for us and, and communicate it into better language that attracts you to participate. So just remember that the NSC is uh, hungry for visionary, passionate, and well-run organizations that can scale. Yeah. And this model, we are, we are so confident in its scalability in regional plants and also uh, 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 county plants. Uh, fundraising templates, this is a fundraising template that they'll do. Uh, we will target members who can only afford 6,000 6, per month contribution, 12,000 uh, from their paycheck, yeah? Uh, 12,000 12, um, 12, per month, 18,000 and 24,000. You can also pay just one off. Um, again, that will be able to cumulatively raise us 6.12 uh, uh, million US dollars um, for almost 10% of the company will be already be um, uh, allocated. Um, the land allocation is there. Uh, unallocated shares, um, total allocated shares are that. We have a max for a strategic investor. 
there, but unallocated shares is 423 million, which, which um, half of it will go into bonus shares and the rest as um, uh, uh, PSK shares and also incentives to the uh, team that will be able to run the project. Um, strategic investor scouting. Uh, we've already approached, uh, you know, the Bill and Melinda Foundation, uh, the Africa Resource, Re Africa Resource Center. Uh, we're also looking to uh, uh, attract USID. We know they gave meds the initial seed capital to form to form uh, meds to start meds. We'll also look look for such partnership. Um, personally, I have experience with Bill and Melinda Foundation. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll also look look for them. Uh, the investment arm of Bill and Melinda Foundation, this IFC and all those. Uh, but again, those these like coming in after something has already come up. So as members, we have to really, you know, rally together and put something up. Uh, and if uh, then now others can come in because this is our sector. We need to show confidence in it. Approach uh, leading global pharmaceutical entities in high uh, volume bilateral fluids to invest uh, in equity loans. So we have we'll, um, we already have letters to the Indian High Commission, Kepsa, B Brown. Um, again, we'll attract and, and identify the best deal that we get. The Team is free to determine suitability of number of technical and strategic investors, whatever mix that we need. Um, we'll seek state incentives, special purpose, special economic zone status. Again, uh, that will give us the whole thing of uh, being able to put into the local market more than what the EPZ, EPZ puts yeah, uh, into the market. Remember, the EPZ is capped at 20%. Uh, special incentives for APM and manufacturers because we know. Whatever we are entering into, the fluids uh, manufacturing is borderline API, yeah. And the Ministry of Trade, particularly, actually, we even uh, made a presentation where the Ministry of Trade was in, and uh, they are looking at incentives for API uh, manufacturers. Guaranteed orders from Ministry of Health, uh, Vision 2030, and Presidential Delivery Unit, and, and endorsement as a national flagship project. So again. We'll be getting this as we go on, um, uh, and that's one of the KPIs for the members. This report was made possible by meetings uh, uh, that uh, were done by the following leaders, um, uh, Dr. Louis, Dr. Ayeye, Dr. Nelly Kimani, Dr. Rutere, Dr. Peter, uh, Mr. Mr. Peterson Mwangi, Dr. Mwenda, the piece of chair, and Dr. Alois Bibi. Um, allow me to stop here sharing and that's the end of my presentation and really i would like to go back to um, the beginning and sort of just remind you this is a call to action for you to to uh, remember the three things we either go into politics to raise our profile we either go make noise to raise our profile or we either come together and solve problems that the nation is currently experiencing because of the close borders um, that COVID brought and increased supply chain costs, uh, we are insecure. And this is a matter of national security. So you coming in as pharmacists, as PSK, and offering this uh, sitting on the table, you actually get to sit as, a, as part of the security of the national interest committees that are taking us broad. What better profile to give yourself? And this involves each and every one of us, including our friends of the society. Remember, it gives you an opportunity to serve the nation, raise your profile, and give uh, you a huge return on your investment for your generosity and vision. Um, Dr. Kati, back to you. Uh, I'll take questions. You can see there, there's a lot of chatting going on. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much for your great presentation. Um, the model that you've just taken us through is extremely, extremely remarkable. And honestly speaking, your vision for PSK is very, very impressive. And you've schooled us on matters investment. And I really, really like what you, you said in your opening remarks. And I quote, we need to raise the profile of the Kenyan pharmacist and PSK Kenya, both regionally and globally. And so my fellow participants, I'd really like to urge each and every one of you to think about what we will leave for the future generations in matters pharmacy. So thank you once again, Mr. President, for taking us through your presentation. 
it's an eye opener of the things that we can do when we come together as pharmacists. So we are going to go into a 10 minute break. And just before we go into the break, a few reminders. One, kindly remember to go to the PPB portal to prescribe for your CPD points. Also, if you have any questions to the presenters, go to the Q&A tab and you can post your question there. They'll be answered by the presenters. Um, so we'll go into a 10 minute break and we'll reconvene at uh, 11.05 for another abstract presentation. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, as, as we go into the break, just a reminder also that um, the presentations will be shared on PSK YouTube page. Yeah, so you'll be able to access all the presentations from the YouTube page of PSK. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Eric and I'll quickly take you through the process of subscribing to a CPD event, claiming CPD tokens, and I'll also address the challenges you're likely to encounter in the process. When you log into your PPB portal, you'll find different icons, but the ones that are most important to CPD are the ones called CPD, the one of claim tokens, and the one of self-reporting how do you subscribe to a cpd event when we say subs make sure you subscribe we we mean you visit your portal come to this cpd icon which leads to all the events that are coming and how do you subscribe uh, i've already subscribed to all the days of the conference so i'll demonstrate with this event provided by knh and i'll click subscribe then subscribe to event it will tell me you've already subscribed to this event follow up with the provider whenever you are subscribing you want to avoid uh, clicking subscribe in quick succession on different events because then it is only the first event that will be captured the rest will say already subscribed, yet they have not been subscribed to. You can confirm if your subscription is successful by the change of color. The color changes, for example, this event has changed from the black button to a gray button that tells already subscribed. You can as well come back to claim tokens, uh, where you'll find all the events that you've subscribed to um refresh that page you'll see 
whether the subscription was successful or not. It is very important to make sure that your subscription is confirmed because the token that you send after the event can only be claimed under the events that you subscribed. So once you subscribe and after you attend the event, if it's this conference, you'll 